She's so cute! Oh. Oh. I get this all the time. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Animaniacs characters. Hello, Nurse! You're finished! You failed! You're fired! Merry Christmas! How is my disguise, Pinky? Oh! Is that you, Brain? For this list, we're looking at some of our favorite castmates from the classic Zany to the Max cartoon, as well as the Hulu reboot. A few of these will be grouped together since it's hard to have one without the other. A true sign of a good ensemble cast. Think we missed any of your favorites? Let us know who your favorite character is in the comments below. Number 10, Rita. Like Abbott and Costello, like Sonny and Cher, like Martin and Lewis, they're a perfect player. Rita is a sassy, independent kitty roaming the streets alongside her best friend Runt. Name's Rita. First time in the joint? Yup. What you in for? Wedding on the carpet. A very dim-witted dog who's as loyal as they come. Ah, what difference does it make? Soon we'll be sleeping the big sleep. I could use a nap. While Runt isn't the smartest pooch, Rita still sticks by him because underneath her cool, detached demeanor lies a caring soul hoping to find a good home. Humans ain't what they seem to be. Of course, Rita's most notable trait is her singing. At least once in almost every sketch, she needs to belt out a song straight out of Broadway, thanks to the musical talent of her actress, Bernadette Peters. Rita, glad I found you safe and sound. Brunch, where the blazes have you been? Rita, doing straight time in La Pound. Sadly, after season one, Rita and Runt rarely ever appeared again and were reduced to supporting or background characters. But it's hard to forget the feline with the golden voice. Maybe they need pets. Don't take any bets. Still there's you and me. That sure was pretty, Rita. I hope we don't get sued. Number nine, Minerva Mink. It's not pretty being her. Who is it? Good evening. I'm in love. Minerva is a drop-dead gorgeous mink who can freeze men in their tracks just by walking past them. I'll handle this. There's been a... <laughs> She's mostly snobby, using her beauty as a means to get what she wants or to avoid danger from predators. However, not even she can resist going nuts when she sees a handsome fellow. Oh, hi, Minerva. or a priceless diamond. <laughs> Unfortunately, Minerva was a little too pretty. She was deemed too mature for the target audience, and thus served as a background character with only two solo sketches to her name. Wilfred B. Wolf, are you asking me out on a date? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> I suppose I could wear something sleek and scandalous. While her time in the spotlight was short-lived, she made the most out of it and still holds a place in our hearts. Number eight, the good feathers. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a good feather. One of the more sophisticated sketches of the original series featured a trio of Italian-American pigeons calling themselves the good feathers. Hey, cool, I'm walking here. You are walking with me? Is that what you're doing? Are you walking with me? I don't see anybody else here. Bobby is the cool-headed leader, Pesto is the ill-tempered hothead, and Squid acts as the hopeless newcomer slash occasional episode narrator. What's with you? Well, I'd like to become a good feather. <laughs> Every day, these birds take to the streets looking for food and to show what tough birds they are, only to end up splattered. Obviously, the three are direct parodies of the three leading characters of Goodfellas, and most of their episodes are kid-friendly spoofs of the mafia movie genre, made even funnier by their boss being the god Pigeon. He says you're in. All right. If you come through with some food. Sure, I'll get some food. Though luck is rarely on their side, at least the good feathers will always have each other, for better or worse. What exactly do you mean by that? What? I mean you're really stuck, you know. No, I do not know. You tell me. You mean I'm like an old piece of gum? Is that what you mean? Number seven, Dr. Otto von Scratch and Sniff. 
Dr. Otto Scratch and Sniff, world famous psychoanalyst to the stars? Correct! I won, I won! Whenever anyone at Warner Brothers has a meltdown, they pay a visit to the studio's pee psychiatrist, Dr. Scratch and Sniff. Unfortunately, there are three patients that this Austrian doctor is incapable of fixing. The Warners. It's an ink blot. I say. No, no, no. It's not supposed to look like anything. Then you did a very good job. I didn't draw it! Poor Scratchy is almost always the butt of the Warners' zany antics and ends up being driven insane himself. How do you think he ended up going bald? Excuse me. Despite how much they love messing with him, the Warners have a soft spot for dear old Scratchy, and vice versa. Who knows? With Scratch and Sniff's return in the reboot, maybe he'll finally have a chance to get the jump on the Warners for a change. I am the new and improved Dr. Otto von Scratch and Sniff, the reboot Scratch and Sniff. I am going to win sometimes, and not just be the butt of your elaborate slapstick death. <laughs> Number 6. Heloise Nurse. Hello, Nurse. Nurse! Nurse! Yes, Dr. Scratch and Sniff? Yes, believe it or not, that is her name. Nurse is the studio's medic, and arguably the most beautiful woman on the show. Hello, Nurse! She's the object of Yakko and Wacko's affection and the inspiration behind the iconic catchphrase and running gag. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the most gorgeous girl of all? Hello, Nurse! However, she's more than just a gorgeous face. She's also a multi-talented genius who's shown to have more occupations than just being a medic, making her one of the most versatile characters in the show. She has several PhDs, speaks fluent Japanese, and the shoes will always match with a bus. Unfortunately, the only thing Nurse can't do is make a full comeback in the reboot, which is sad as she easily could have been the new CEO at Warner Brothers if she wanted to be. Number 5. Dot Warner, also known as Princess Angelina Contessa Luisa Francesca Banana Fana Bobesca III. Word of warning, call her Dottie and you're as good as dead. She's so cute! <laughs> I get this all the time. Dot is the youngest and only Warner's sister, and the self-appointed cute one. When my lips sticking out in a cute little pout, then there just is no doubt why the guys like to shout. She's a beaut! Many are powerless against her adorableness, and she relishes every minute of it. While she's arguably the more stable of the siblings, she's still got her overdramatic aggressive moments. I'm Yakko. I'm Wacko. And I'm Princess. Ah! Hello, Princess. <laughs> princess. <laughs> and she's not afraid to bring the hammer down on her brothers. Literally. <laughs> a knockout. Nevertheless, she happily joins them in spreading the zaniness across the Warner movie lot and the globe. And she adds a little touch of cuteness and sassiness to the mix. I'm simply a goddess. And isn't she modest? This transitions well into the reboot, where she'll step up as leader whenever the need arises. Number 4. Slappy Squirrel. Meet the crankiest critter in the whole wide world. Enough with the singing already! Voiced by series writer Sherry Stoner, Slappy Squirrel used to be a fictitious Looney Tunes star, but is now retired and living with her cheerful nephew Skippy. I think we should just go to the store and buy a bag of walnuts. Oh, yeah, we'll have them in hysterics with that bit. Six minutes in a checkout line. Ooh, somebody stop me, I'm laughing. She's been around the block when it comes to comedy and absolutely despises how soft today's cartoons are. No gags, no bulldozers, no dynamite. What a rotten cartoon. Despite her age, Slappy is a pro when it comes to cartoon violence and stays one step ahead of boneheaded villains. Thanks for the walnuts. Annoying neighbors and even obnoxious critics. Have you ever laughed at a Slappy Squirrel cartoon? Never. She repulses me. <laughs> Aside from looking out for Skippy, Slappy isn't too concerned about others' safety, and will happily blow up anyone who annoys or antagonizes her as long as it's funny. After all, what's comedy without some serious pain? Number 3. Pinky and the Brain What do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. These two bounce off each other so well, we had to place them together. They're Pinky and the Brain, yes, Pinky and the Brain. 
Pinky is a slim, cockney-speaking dimwit, while Brain is a squat, Orson Welles-inspired genius with dreams of world domination. We'll have to take over the world quickly. Every item we need is here in the lab save one. The Infundibulator. Every night, these two genetically enhanced lab mice concoct a harebrained scheme to take over the world, only to fail miserably, either due to Pinky's incompetence or Brain's lack of foresight. How is my disguise, Pinky? Oh! Is that you, Brain? You flatter me, Pinky. While they're as different as night and day, they're an inseparable duo that cares for one another despite their blunders and Brain's temper. I urge you to run for your lives while you can. We're not making this up just so we can take over the world. Oh no, it's heading this way. Their sketch became so popular with fans that the duo got two of their own spin-off series and a guaranteed return in the Hulu reboot. I've spent the last 22 years undergoing rigorous psychotherapy and realized that our codependent relationship isn't based on a shared desire to conquer the world, but rather my enabling of your systematic emotional and physical abuse. <laughs> Number two, Wacko Warner. Heavily inspired by Harpo Marx, Wacko is the middle Warner sibling and is easily the most optimistic and zaniest of the three. Trenton's in New Jersey, north of Jefferson, Missouri. You got Richmond in Virginia, South Dakota has Pierre, Harrisburg's in Pennsylvania, and Augusta's up in Maine. Along with his funny Liverpudlian accent, he's also a master of prop comedy thanks to his magic bag of gags. So you're saying you're not gonna eat the rest of that? He also has a massive appetite for anything and everything, edible or not, and is deadly afraid of clowns. Not that we blame him. They're a cannon! Wacko may not be the brightest bulb and may suffer from middle kid syndrome, but it's hard not to love this weird little doofus, especially when he's able to belch classical music with no effort. Leave it to Wacko to turn lowbrow humor into first-class comedy. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Francis Pip Pump Handle. Great cheese balls, huh, Pip? I'll say, cheese balls are one of my all-time favorite foods. I always seem to meet the most interesting people when I'm around them, too. In fact, cheese balls bring to mind the time I met Bob Barker. You don't say. Mr. Director. All right, kids, look, listen, let's not waste time. I'm a busy man. I got a movie to direct. I got comedy to think about and plan and plot and so forth and so on. After all, I'm a comedy genius. The Flame. Who turned on the lights? Oh, that's right. I did. But where did the darkness go? Oh, ran down the stairs, huh? Ralph T. Guard. What is that thing? I, it's a, 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 a clone. No, I, a, a phone. I, I know a drone. That's it. It's a drone. Hey! Skippy Squirrel. What's an anvil got to do with this story? Who cares? Anvils are funny. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Yakko Warner Taking the number one spot is the eldest and self-appointed leader of the Warner Brothers. Oh, you're messing up my show! Hey, your show was messed up way before we got here. Ooh, very funny. Who writes your material? They do. As his name implies, Yakko is the talkative one of the trio, armed with biting sarcasm and smart alecky comebacks, and pointing out the series innuendos with his iconic good night everybody catchphrase. A giant pez dispenser. Want one? Please. Stop playing with my bust! Good night, everybody. He also has a bit of an obsession with girls like a lot of boys his age. Of course, Yakko takes it to a zany new level. Hello, nurse. It's possible he may have some insecurities, but he definitely hides them well, and still remains, in our eyes, one of the funniest and most iconic characters in the franchise. Costa Rica, Belize, Nicaragua, Bermuda, Bahamas, Tobago, San Juan, Paraguay, Uruguay, Suriname, and French Guiana, Barbados, and Guam. Plus, who else can teach us about the nations of the world in a catchy song? Tunisia, Morocco, Uganda, Angola, Zimbabwe, Djibouti, Botswana, Mozambique, Zambia, Swaziland, Gambia, Guinea, Algeria, Ghana. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.